WTF is Retail, presented by Excellent Zephyr. And you talked about already Kickstarter and yep. how that played a massive part in obviously the start of the brand. Mm -hmm. Could you walk us through that a little bit? How much money you raised? How yeah. you thought, let's do it this way? Yeah. And, and how that came up. Yeah. Uh, the idea from uh, Blue Light Glasses came from uh, Google. My partner worked at Google, Edu. And there they have like this engineer uh, building where everyone was wearing yellow tint lenses, right? Then Edu was like, what is this? Uh, and the engineer told him, oh, they, those glasses are to protect the eyes from the blue light. And one of them uh, explained him about Kickstarter and also about a brand in the States that is about blue glasses as well. So we started investigating both the issues. Uh, at that time, I was living in Colombia, Medellin with my first startup, but me and Edu, we've been talking uh, since long time ago and uh yeah we both were using collyrium eye drops mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know because uh, we had itty eyes red eyes everything was uh pretty uncomfortable uh before i was working at a se uh, tax center in uh, operations consulting and the same always with the collyrium right so we said okay those glasses are amazing uh i think uh, it's a great idea, but the style of that brand from the state that it's called Gunner, uh, it's uh, they focus just on gamers and developers because mm -hmm. they were like cycling. Uh, I, I were. Uh, and we said, well, nowadays everyone is in front of the computer. You don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be a gamer. And we said, okay, let's put cool frames with uh, the best techn technology in terms of blue light glasses uh, or lenses and let's do it. And then you have uh, the problem of the money, right? Uh, and uh, you, you have three options. The first one is just uh, family, fools and friends. Uh, we didn't want to use that money just in case it was a crazy idea yeah. or whatever, or money, nothing. I went bankrupt uh, with my first company in Medellin. And the third one was uh, private investment, like mm -hmm. it's the first thing that pops up in your mind. But uh, everyone that is creating a company, they are like, um, Uyendo, they want to go out from the nine to five, mm -hmm. uh, right? Uh, but they don't think that when you get private investment, you are 24 uh, seven because you have a boss since they won. Yeah. And we said, okay, let's not do that. And uh, yeah, we started investigating Kickstarter and Kickstarter has been amazing. We started with 5,000 euros each. Mm -hmm. So a total investment of 10,000. And thanks to that, we have everything that we have today, right? Our first Kickstarter in 2017 with the first glasses that we currently have them. It's like the A-State collection. Uh, it's heavier, but it w it's the perfect quality. It's amazing, the quality of those. Those ones are not acetate because those ones, uh, these ones are super lightweight and mm -hmm. I prefer that. Uh, but in terms of quality, the other ones are, are better. So we launched the first one. We were uh, willing to get around 30, 40K, but we finally got around 120K. Wow. And with that, we thought, okay, we got it. There's something here in this product that can, that has a market fit, right? So people need blue light glasses, but maybe not all the features are the correct ones. So uh, we start asking all the backers, everyone that helped us there. And they said, uh, look, uh, they are super heavy or they are quite expensive mm -hmm. or uh, they are, uh, I bought them online and as I couldn't try it before buying them, they are stretching here in my head, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just made them super uh, elastic, flexible with the flex hinges, super lightweight, hearing all the feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One year after with that, we launched a second Kickstarter campaign with all the new product, new brand, new features that they chose. And from 120K, we moved to 740K. So mm -hmm. six times better than yeah. Kickstarter. Same thing, same team, me, my, myself, Edu, and one, I think one or two more people, that's it. Uh, and thanks to that, we start hiring people and just creating the company and uh, like how they call it, like the private brand, when someone is, call is creating a drop shipping and then it works, they call it the brand, right? So, yeah. they, so we started creating Barner mm -hmm. as we have it today. Uh -huh. cool. And how big is the team now? Now we are 13 people, right. uh, but I have to say that we outsource or externalize a lot. Yeah. Uh, this makes us more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think with this team, we are perfect to go. Cool. Uh, we have to uh, let some people go like uh, two, three months ago, because after we were talking about the iOS 14.5, all how all the return on ad spend went down. Uh, and of course you have 
your PL, your profit and loss, and you have uh, the online uh, channel, you have the offline, so you measure every one of them. And as the revenue went down, you have to reduce as well the cost. You mm -hmm. cannot be blinded and, and doing like this. Yes, we will move, we'll move forward now. And it's, uh, it's curious because you have seen other brands that they had to fire like 50% of the employees and uh, go out of the office. And when you're growing, you're looking at them and you think, I'm not going to do the same mistake. Mm -hmm. And you do it. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But yes, now we, uh, for us, as we are a boots, well, we have bootstrapped everything and it's our money. We don't have investment uh, for now that we are going to have soon uh, in order to grow in the offline because it's more, uh, it has a lot of tensions in the cash, mm -hmm. much more than yeah. online. Uh, we can talk about that later. But uh, yes, we just make worth every euro that we have. And we are like focused on profitability, not in revenue. Revenue is vanity, profits is healthy. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm kind of interested um, with the Kickstarter. King, Kickstarter is obviously incredible. Like, even I did it years ago with, with my band when we were trying to make money mm -hmm. for, for albums and stuff. It's a real great way to, to fund money. But how did you kind of um, get the word out about your brand? And how did you get people interested in the Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. and let them learn about it? Yeah. How did you do that? A lot of people think that Kickstarter is just about doing like a great video and a great pictures and a great landing page. And then they think virality and uh, virality doesn't exist since long time ago, not in online, not in offline, not in Kickstarter. Uh, the first uh, Kickstarter campaign that we saw was Fidget Cube. It's a box mm -hmm. with a lot of fidgets, so okay. yeah, it's anti-stress. They did like six, mo six million, something like this. Mm -hmm. And people were like super crazy with Kickstarter. They, th they were thinking, oh, free money, free money, easy money. And no, it's like the same as online. It works with a performance ad. So we had to rely on Facebook as well. The only difference comparing Kickstarter to online e-commerce is that you have to find out the perfect Kickstarter agency. Why? It's just one simple thing is they have lists of people that have backed previously a Kickstarter project. Mm. It's just as simple as that. Why? Because that person knows how Kickstarter works, that we are going to deliver in six, eight, ten months. Mm -hmm. So it's they don't have to understand the, the page and they are not going to have surprises. So click on the ad, click on login, that's it. Mm -hmm. So oh. if anyone's listening then, uh, thinking about going on <laughs> yeah. Kickstarter, take Ramon's advice yeah. and, and don't try and do it yourself. It's investing ads. It's, 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 uh, it's the same as online. Yeah. Yeah. WTF is Retail, presented by Excellent Zephyr.